On August 4th, Pat Gelsinger, CEO of Intel, stated that Meteor Lake Ultra would be Intel's next Centrino moment. Which, for those who don't know, what Pat's basically saying is, just like Centrino during the start of the Core 2 era, this was going to be the moment where everyone stood back and went, wow, Intel now is finally caught up in efficiency, exceeding the competition in performance, and integrating features that the competition can't really compete with. Intel's back baby. Before, one of the main things was the Centrino marketing's networking and Wi-Fi capabilities. This time with Ultra, it's supposedly superior AI performance, which is why I'm sure they're excited to announce that Meteor Lake's AI performance is tying AMD's last gen product. Ouch. And yeah, AMD's real competitor to Meteor Lake is something that Intel is avoiding talking about today. It's Hawkpoint. And for those that think that the reason Intel isn't talking about Hawkpoint a lot is simply because Meteor Lake is ready way before it and has first or second mover advantage, that's just not true. If you go look around, you'll see that a lot of the press is straight up saying that Meteor Lake doesn't really seem to be ready today and won't be ready for at least a month. And so it is kind of weird that Intel isn't at least somewhat mentioning why they're better than Hawkpoint when they only talk about Phoenix. And I can't help but feel that a major reason you're seeing a lot of the largest tech tuber channels out there having no Meteor Lake samples available to them in time for this release day is because Intel doesn't want the most in-depth and long long form reviews to be ready anytime soon because well I think what we're going to find in about a month from now is that well you'll always occasionally find someone who's willing to try to bend over to the side and contort themselves to say that Meteor Lake is kind of good that the longer the review more often than not the more the reviewer will find that Meteor Lake has a lot of weaknesses and isn't really better than its predecessor. For example, if we go to one of the few long-form and in-depth reviews of Meteor Lake today from Notebook Check, we can see that in real-world testing, Meteor Lake does nothing to decisively win multi-threading in most circumstances. And that that's with having 16 cores total against AMD's last gen 8 core. And it really doesn't win efficiency either until you start cherry picking very specific scenarios. But if you don't, it's not more efficient than its previous generation. And in fact, if you stop playing 3D Mark, which is apparently everybody's favorite game for 10 seconds, and actually go out there and benchmark a handful of real games, what you'll see is that Intel is often still behind AMD's last generation APU and integrated graphics performance. And some games have crazy bad performance, like we've come to expect out of any ARC generation, I suppose, suggesting Intel really hasn't learned anything since Alchemist. And frankly, other people like Dave2D, another fairly in-depth review, found similar things. The CPU is a bit stronger in his testing compared to last-gen stuff, but it's sometimes, not always. In the battery life, it's still behind AMD, despite this supposedly being Meteor Lake's great innovation next to also not having better AI than AMD's last generation. And the GPU in this test just ties AMD's, and I have to emphasize this, last generation offerings. And by the way, when it comes to those Intel systems, I think it's very important to point out that a lot of them are shipping to reviewers, the few that got them, with lightning fast RAM, which does help boost integrated graphics performance a ton and is way faster than the AMD offerings in these reviews, suggesting that the only reason Intel sometimes beats AMD's last gen integrated graphics is because they are juicing their review samples super hard that, and this is even more damning, I at least checked one location that was selling actual retail versions of this Asus Meteor Lake laptop in the notebook check review. And guess what? It has slower memory than what was in the review sample. And that's just one red flag, but I'm sorry, that's enough just right out of the gate for me to say buyer beware. Intel isn't seeding that many reviewers, and at least right at first glance, I'm already seeing that some of the review samples are overclocked to the moon compared to what you'll actually be buying for $1,300 or more at Best Buy. And I can't help but imagine a lot more red flags and curious things are going to be noticed by people regarding Meteor Lake review day stuff over the next couple of weeks. But I actually noticed some other things too that point to regressions in IPC, 
very curious statements about efficiency that don't add up with the actual reviews out there and really force me to start talking about Bulldozer a bit here. And before you say I'm crazy, you got to hear me out on it. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Do you feel like you're wasting your time prodding through eBay searching for reasonably priced Windows keys? Well, there's no need to do that. Just go to cdkeyoffer.com during their Christmas super sale. Going to cdkeyoffer.com gets you reasonably priced Microsoft operating systems, Office products, and even many of the latest games on discount. And I think that this website actually is just important for PC gamers to have in an industry where we keep being nickeled and dimed over and over don't overpay for something that you basically have to buy to play all the PC games out there. Go to cdkeyoffer.com. And you know, actually, cdkeyoffer.com has been a sponsor of Moore's Law is Dead for many years. You know, over the Christmas break, me and Dan, co-host of Broken Silicon, we will be gaming on our PCs, and both of them run operating systems bought through cdkeyoffer.com. Their stuff works. The community trusts them at Moore's Law is Dead. And so if you need any of these products, go there. Just clicking on the links in the description helps out the channel a ton. But if you need these products, make sure you use offer code BROKENSILICON to get 25% off all Microsoft products and then die shrink to get 3% off everything else on the website. Again, going there, using these keys helps the channel a lot. It helps save you money. Check out cdkeyoffer.com today. All right, so let's continue with this slide here, which I pulled from video cards. And it is an official slide from Intel. So this is Intel's own method of cherry picking that if you actually look carefully, you might notice Raptor Lake is scoring 8% faster than Meteor Lake in single threading performance, despite only being clocked 4% faster. That right there directly suggests that Meteor Lake is an IPC regression. And this flies in the face of these statements out of Intel that are supposedly arguing that Meteor Lake was just like some simple thing that is supposed to be on a smaller node and it really wasn't about performance. When you see IPC regressions like this, they tried something then. They are going with a new architecture and it clearly just failed to deliver on performance and may have even gone backwards in IPC. Now, Speaking of Intel's own slides, let's go to this one here. This power consumption one is just bizarre. It is claiming up to 79% less power consumption while idling at desktop, and yet there's a separate idling at desktop benchmark. And this is when I had to go, okay, what is going on? We got to check the fine print. And I really can't find anything explaining exactly what not busy means. I assume that means just literally putting a laptop on a desk and not letting anybody do anything with it. But it's so different than the busy one that I can't help but argue that there's a chance Intel may have put this system into safe mode or booted up into some version of Windows with like all of the apps uninstalled so they could get an extreme scenario an extreme scenario that no one is actually going to experience, as seen in review after review after review that came out today. Intel can cherry pick and claim whatever they want about efficiency, but the reviews don't lie. They clearly show that Intel, if anything, has gone backwards in efficiency in normal usage scenarios, which is just crazy. And I gotta say, this level of bizarre cherry picking that isn't reflected in real reviews is actually bringing the performance the company is arguing it should be bringing. This really does just remind me of Bulldozer. Now look, there will be some people here who say comparing Meteor Lake to Bulldozer is absurd, but I think a lot of the people who say that maybe weren't around during the Bulldozer era because Bulldozer is now remembered as a failure but it's not because it always used more energy, nor that it never improved performance over its predecessor. In fact, funnily enough, one place that Bulldozer really improved on over its predecessor was in idle power consumption, just like Meteor Lake. But overall, its efficiency, though you could argue it was better than its predecessor, although it wasn't always better, it could not catch up to its competition's previous generation. No, the comparison between Meteor Lake and Bulldozer is very simple. Both are supposedly radical new architectures that were overhyped for a long time, came out late on a new node, and despite new nodes, a new architecture, and all the hype, 
it's really not an upgrade over its predecessor. And what's really scary is a lot of the reviews and articles I'm reading today are very similar to how people talked about Bulldozer when it came out. I think a lot of people forget this. When Bulldozer came out, people went out of their way to say that it was overall better and just the start of something new, despite being disappointed by it. It really wasn't until about a year later that everyone just admitted, yeah, it sucked. It, it, it really wasn't very good. I can't help but think that a lot of people, if they do do this in the comments, that say it's absurd to compare Meteor Lake to Bulldozer, forget that. But Bulldozer actually had a lot of defenders when it came out, and it actually improved idle power consumption over its predecessor. If you cherry pick, like people are cherry picking with Meteor Lake, and like people did cherry pick with Bulldozer, of course you can find ways to argue it's good. You know, but that doesn't matter. Fanboys always argue whatever they want. Fanboys always find a way to put a bow on a turd as long as that turd is pinched off by their favorite company. But just like Bulldozer, Meteor Lake is a product that improves on idle power, sometimes wins, but doesn't do it enough to impress the non-brainwashed people that can see Intel has leveraged all this new tech, spent all of this money, and hasn't improved their product. And God, if Meteor Lake really is the start of a new era for Intel, like they say it's going to be, and therefore a hint of how Arrow Lake is going to turn out, I am starting to genuinely fear for this company's future. Look, it's too early to say if Arrow Lake will come up as short as Meteor Lake did, but one thing is for certain. When Bulldozer released, people were immediately saying things like, it's just the start, and all AMD back then, and all Intel needs to do now, is keep executing, wait for a pile driver. The momentum will keep going. But I'm going to tell you what, Arrow Lake better be a whole hell of a lot better than pile driver was, or we're not going to have any real competition for a decade again.